Kata everybody, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be the first feedback critique session. I'm pretty stoked about this. First off, thank you to everybody who sent through their images for critique. Um, I know it's a brave thing to do and you know a lot of artists would like to get feedback but you know it takes a, a bit of courage to go out and actually ask for some feedback or some critique so I applaud you. Um, this is going to be the first session of hopefully many. Um, yeah, hope you fellas enjoy this uh, new video, new, new style of video, and I hope you fellas get some sort of value from this. If you're an artist watching this and you get some um, inspiration, you know, from other artists putting their work out there to, you know, get critiques and feedback, um, I'm open, so send through your images to me. And before I get started to... Um, just know that this is not my own subjective views on all of these artworks I'm about to show you fellas so don't think that my way is the only way you know you can easily just listen to what I say and then you know not even take any of the advice that I give or any of the feedback I give you know that's totally fine totally understandable up to you um, but it's good to just get different perspectives on your work um, it definitely has helped me grow as an artist um, but yeah, without any further ado, let's jump into it. Alright, so first piece is from Te Okiwa. He's a moko artist as you can tell. And let me just zoom in a bit. So, right off the bat, um, what I would give advice on is uh, the piece in terms of the composition and the different elements in this piece um, so for me personally uh, because this area is so small I wouldn't tend to put too much in there so let me give you an example of what you could do to make this piece in my opinion look a little bit easier to read so let's go through so squint if you squint your eyes and you look at this piece try and look for what are the main elements and think about what can stay, what needs to stay there and think about what doesn't need to be there. So for example, for me, I think these don't need to be there. Let's just look for any extra bits that probably don't need to be there, just to simplify what's happening. So look already there, it's a bit easier to read. You've got this, this negative space. The thing about Moko, it doesn't in my opinion. Um, what makes a piece look good is not only how detailed and how much you've got going on in the positive areas of your moko, but also in the negatives, you know, what you choose to omit or what you choose to leave out of your piece is just as important. Because these pieces, these positives, you know, the parts with the line workers, those are only powerful and they only look good because of the contrast between that and the negative space. So another example is you could even simplify this this is like I say this is just my own personal opinion just based off what I think um, looks nice just to make it a bit easier to read to look that's a bit easier to read again you know simplify it down and just speaking from my own experience um, you know through Moko I remember coming up and I thought um, doing super super detailed stuff for the sake of it was better um, but I found that you know in the long run when you think about the life of a muko or the life of a tattoo um, you know more is not necessarily better um, but yeah so already that looks a bit easier to read uh, on another note like in terms of line quality a uh, big thing to do is just get good equipment when you have the best equipment um, that there is available then you know it's just down on your technique and it's a good thing to eliminate um, the gear as the thing that's holding you back not that it's holding you back but as the thing that is limiting your potential let's say it that way so get better gear and once you've got the best gear um, then you'll be able to focus on technique and those things come with practice experimentation asking people I can't show how I do a good line and tattooing because I'm not tattooing right now but um, for me I think the basics is just finding a good hand position what's comfortable for you 
and just focusing on every single line not just focusing on the big lines focusing on every little line as well and don't take any line for granted so yeah um yep thank you to the bro for sending this through the okiwa thank you brother um all right let's jump to the next one let me just clear that up so this one was sent through by Stephen. Um, he wanted a bit of um, advice on how he can make the Ponami jump out. So first off, off the bat, you know, it's a beautiful piece, really well rendered. Um, there's no mistaking what it is. Uh, my advice um, to the bro was to simplify the background. If you wanted this to stand out, because it's such a dark color and you've got a pretty dark background as well. Um, I would say either blur the background, you know, so you're not trying to fight where your eye is supposed to look. Um, make the background lighter because this is dark. Make the background lighter. You say there's contrast. And a lesson I learned in 2011 from Jeff Gogwe, tattoo artist that I really look up to, was one of the best things you can possibly do for your artist to think about contrast contrast between light and dark um rough and smooth you know different textures even different themes so something that seems gentle versus something that seems harsh or rough and contrast creates tension and when there's tension it makes it interesting you don't want to just have a piece that's just boring not that this is boring um, but yeah, that could really bring some life to this piece. It's just blurring the background. Um, or even, let's, here look, let's simplify this background heaps. So it can stand out a bit. I'll just do this real quick. Just so you can get my gist. And um, one thing too, one thing, another thing that I learned, uh, which is something that I still work on now is, from Jeff Gogway again was, to paint or to draw more than what you see so not just to try and create what you can see but to create that feeling that you get from looking at it which means um, exaggerating certain areas um, omitting like I said before certain areas that don't serve the emotion or the feeling or um, you know the overall piece and when you do those things it makes it more than just a drawing or more than just a painting you know like for myself personally I'm not a huge fan of hyper realism I think you know it gets to a point for me where if, if you're just doing things that a camera can do it sort of defeats the purpose I love drawings that look like drawings paintings that look like paintings you know not that it has to look you know not realistic but for me it's about um you know doing a piece that's unique to that medium that you're using and it just makes for a more interesting piece so for example already this piece you know it's gone from that where if you were to look at it at a glance you can see sort of a rough silhouette but if you compare it to that you can tell oh yeah it's obvious that it's about this so um yeah to the bro um keep it up brother uh you know it's obvious that you're really really good at rendering in detail um yeah maybe just consider that just think about contrast and thank you for sending your piece through brother all right let's jump into the next one So this one is from Manaya. Um, beautiful piece. Some nice um, line work going on. Like, look at that. It's perfect. Perfect line work in there. And for me, I think um, symmetry always looks good in Moko anyway, um, and in a lot of other art pieces. But for me in particular, if you've looked at my work over the past couple of years. You can tell that I always have elements of symmetry. Um, it looks nice to me. It's it's um, when I create moko, I like to create pieces that I think are timeless. So, creating something that I believe will look nice in ten years, twenty years, thirty years, and often it comes down to just really clean, 
clean mahi. Um, so in this, if I were to give any feedback or any criticisms, I would probably say um, just the placement of this manaya compared to that one, or vice versa. It would have looked better if they were balanced. So like, see how this manaya sort of goes over the line. This one's got a space in here. I would have either had, here, let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. I would have either had this one, where this one is, or this one, the same positioning as that. But let me just give you an example of how you could make it look a bit different. Hopefully it works. There. It's not perfect, but you know what I mean? So they sort of match up. That's the thing about um, Symmetry 2. This is it all in my opinion as well, like, like I say. Um, with symmetry, the thing when you do symmetry, if something is off, like how the Manaya heights were different, um, and it's not for a reason, and it's not on purpose, it looks like a mistake. <clears throat> so if, you, if it was purposely supposed to be like that, um, you know, maybe exaggerate it, so it looks like it's supposed to be like that. Um, yeah, but other than that, line work is mean. Um, I love... The spacing between all your high high everything other than that yeah that's probably it brother um appreciate you sending this through to me some nice soft shading as well keep up the good mahi um there's not much feedback i can give on this one because how well you did it so how do you want brother all right let's jump into the next one uh this one is from the ahutama So there it is there. Um, first off, really nice. When you squint your eyes, it's pretty balanced. Um, I was telling the bro uh, when I like to do pieces, because there's so much going on here, you don't know where to look. You know, you don't know where to look first and you don't know where your eyes want to go other than just going, oh, yeah. let me just look at the next thing. So what, um, you could do to make the piece this piece easier to read as you could um, simplify it so let's say have less manaya let's say you had one manaya I like how you got one in there and one there so maybe just eliminate a few of them you know have one there one there maybe one there one there as well balance it out and it'll just make it a bit easier to read um, even for me personally like when I'm choosing my fill-ins, I like to consider readability as well. Like um, for me, if you look at my moko, usually my fill-ins are pakati. That's about it. I keep it pretty clean. And the reason I do that is so the eyes can breathe in those areas. And then when you get to features or manaya or a certain um, part of the moko that is supposed to stand out supposed to be a contrast to that simple high high and pakati areas it's like a little pop of contrast and it's a breath of fresh air so yeah no nah, um the other thing to focus on what you're pretty much already doing here is spacing in your puhuru and in your kuru and stuff so over here for example this is me nitpicking by the way because this piece is a good piece so don't um think i'm just being a ratchet fella but for example like here so you've got this thickness and that thickness are pretty much the same this one gets a bit thinner and then it gets really thin over there you know in the grand picture it looks all right but as soon as you go in you start noticing those differences in thickness and because it's a pretty clean style um that's when you have to start focusing on you know every element you know, the thickness of your pool or making sure it's consistent right across, making sure it's balanced. You know what I mean? So you have like this big area here with just pakati and hai hai. And then over here you've got pool and you've got ngutukaka and all of that. 
you know real close together so which is pretty cool like because of the contrast but you know that's what i mean by balance so to balance these ones up is either having some more mutukaka over here to balance that up or to not have that there and then maybe to turn this into a kuru so it's got more fillings like that you know that's what i mean by balance but yeah um all in all awesome piece brother thank you for sending it through um hope you got some sort of value out of that let's jump into the next one so this one uh this was sent on instagram this person's name on instagram is isolation sketch um doesn't have their name on there but these are their pieces or these are her pieces i believe it's a her um so these are three pieces that she created during isolation obviously beautiful really well rendered um three generations she said um which is a really powerful thing in maori dim but let's jump into each individual piece so here's the nanny i'll just quickly go through all of them just so you guys can see you know perfect um you know use of shade and light you know really well rendered it's very obvious what you're looking at you don't have to fight to see what you're looking at uh, it's the next drawing beautiful again look at those powerful um eyes next piece again is the rangatahi one um, yeah, really well rendered. I just watched a video of hers too of how she does it and it's um, using tissues and stuff to help blend. Okay, now let's jump in. I'll start with the nanny's drawing. So first thing, um, you know, that I would focus on, this is a thing that I've recommended, recommended to a lot of students who are doing art, um, is your paper. So this piece is beautiful. You know, if you're looking at if you just isolate just the face, beautiful. As soon as you venture out and you look at the white space, you can see all these little grubby marks, you know, from fingers. Um, you know, if those weren't there, this piece would be 10 times better, even though you don't have to physically do anything else to the piece. It's just keeping your background clean or adding a background on purpose. So, so have, you can definitely tell that it's sort of random, so it doesn't look like it's on purpose. Um, and around the edge too you know whether you wanted to fade it out you know that's cool but make it look like it was on purpose um the thing with um pieces when you have you know simple elements in it you know like this has got no background so that's a simple element in my opinion um is every element has to be on purpose you know when there's not much going look we're just looking at a face so there's not much going on in the piece and when there isn't much going on in the piece, every element of the piece has to be well thought out in order for it to be a more powerful piece. Um, so the composition, let's talk about composition now. Because I can tell that this composition was made up so they can be all on three papers. If I were to do it, I would have um, probably planned differently. You know, it looks cool, like it's a, it's a cool look. But I think um, once you start breaking them down into the individual pieces, it just looks like she's just randomly in the corner, which is, um, you know, there's some hair coming over here that's obviously not hers. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think, yeah, probably just like maybe beforehand, you could have did rough sketches you know of the composition and you know planning that they were going to be together so you can plan the composition um so it can be more powerful <clears throat> and then the next thing is just this little bit of hair it um, looks random and just the uh, the strokes they look like they're kind of haphazard like they're just last minute things put in there um you could lose those and it would look better or um, just make them look like they're there on purpose, add more. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, look at that man. Beautiful rendering in here. Can tell um, how much she loves to draw faces because of this effort that she's put into the eyes, you know, the lips. Look at all these little wrinkles that add to this queer story. 
so yeah really really powerful piece um yeah all those little things can i believe will help make your work even more powerful <clears throat> so yeah and this is to other artists out there too if you're drawing on paper just look after the whole page um tip is to draw with uh, another paper under your hand so your hand is not smudging with the rest uh baking paper is the best because it slides uh, and it doesn't smudge the drawing underneath and then the other thing is just these corners so i can see a little bit of a fold on that corner and that one there too uh, just these little things can tell the bottoms as well just looking after your paper looking after every edge of it um you know because that paper is carrying your you know all this this effort that you put into this piece so if you can avoid all of those little things um yeah it'll make your piece more powerful make your work better and um it's just a good habit to watch how you look after the the paper that you're working on anyway thank you on to the next one to my so this is a caricature a caricature of him um first off you know really well drawn brother um i think it's funny you know the cool thing about caricature caricatures is they exaggerate certain aspects of your face and you know of your body that sort of show who you are so you know i like the pencil in the ear the earrings obviously that facial hairstyle is what you usually look like so i'm sure people who know you if they didn't know you drew this they'd look at that and go oh that looks like the brew um all right now let's jump into some critiques uh what i would do to make this piece more powerful is um see how you've got no fingers in here or how the finger bends a little bit funny um and even just the style of it it kind of looks like um clip arty or you know like that real generic sort of cartoon style which is all good but i'm sure you want it to stand out and if you want it to stand out um sort of going above and beyond doing a little bit extra helps a piece to stand out um another thing would be probably all these super detailed parts um probably eliminate them you probably don't need the scalar up red bands logos on your gum boots i'll probably just simplify those probably don't need the moko on there um if you wanted to have moko in the piece you could probably have just like one giant kuru on your t-shirt or something or one giant kuru on your pants just so there's not super super detailed parts that look like i'm supposed to zoom into it and then this paper here i'll probably you know have a stick man stick man drawing on that because it looks funny it looks like he drew it on there and it's easier to read because if you squint your eyes you kind of don't know what that is um also another thing too brother is playing around with line weights this is just my own personal opinion you know i know a lot of people have the same thickness line everywhere and it still looks cool but this is just another thing to consider let's go with that thickness just to try and make your piece look a bit more powerful here let's change the line weight on the the very outer lines just to show you what i mean and this also creates that contrast like I was talking about before. This is the same thing that I do and a lot of moko artists do. Is that contrast have a thick outline. Fine fill-ins, you know, makes it look a bit more pleasing to look at. So you know that's just a basic example. Look, it stands out a little bit. It's not. I haven't added too much to it. You know, like there, that, that was it before, and then this is it now. You know, there's not much to it, but it's got a bit more life to it. The other thing you could do, bro, is just um exaggerate, exaggerate parts. Like instead of just having a straight face, maybe let's do this. Let me show you. So 
So instead of it just looking like a generic um, straight face, why not do this? You know, let's say for example, this is not necessarily, you know, you don't have to give him angry eyes, but this is just to show how adding that contrast really changes the piece that makes it look you know a little bit more interesting or just change your mouth to like So already from that, you know, there's not really, there's no expression on there other than like a little smile, which is cool. To that, put more attitude, you know, or you could even just exaggerate that, make your smile come right up to here, you know, squint your eyes, things like that. Make, your, make yourself doing like, make it look more animated. But yeah, that was a pretty deep dive into that one. Um, hope you got some sort of value from that brother thank you for sending that through and uh that wraps up episode one you'll notice that the lighting looks all funny now i've had to chop up this video into two so i'm doing the intro and outro at a separate time um yeah hope you fellas enjoyed this first episode this is um yeah it's been awesome i um, hope you fellas got some value from this and if you're an artist out there who's looking for some critiques or some feedback um to hopefully help make you grow as an artist uh send me a message send through, send through your artwork and um yeah let me help um you know not only you but other artists who may be um a bit too shy to put their work out there for some feedback so yeah it's i think it's really beneficial to everybody and yeah i really appreciate you fellas tuning in Mariola.